First of all, I want to thank the organizer for giving me the opportunity to present here my research. Uh, I will talk to you about uh, anisotropic long-range interactions in spin systems. But uh, first of all, I will give you a brief overview of what I mean for long-range interactions, and, and uh, especially in spin systems. Then I will show you what are the traditional results. I will outline a, a controversy that emerged in literature in, the, in recent years. I will show you some results on standard long-range interacting spin system, and then I will finally deal with the anisotropic case, showing you some uh, scaling analysis, uh, how the system can be divided in different regimes, and I don't want you to spoil the results. So long-range interactions, uh, uh, as I were defined by, in the first lecture by Barre, are power law decaying interaction with the distance. And we parameterize this power law decaying with an exponent d plus sigma. And uh, in my talk, uh, maybe differently from the previous talks, I will focus on the case po of positive sigma. So when sigma is greater than zero, uh, we have many interesting uh, results. This, interaction are this kind of interaction are found in the correlation for DNA sequence, in the interaction between polymers. They, are, they have been studied in neural, as candidates for neural networks, and they, are, they can be responsible for some exotic behavior of uh, materials. We decided to investigate these interactions in spin system because the spin system are the test bed of statistical mechanics, and we have various Monte Carlo and perturbative results available. And uh, our focus will be to determine the phase diagram, the critical exponent of uh, spin system with long range interaction belonging to different symmetry groups. Then, if possible, I will also deal as, give some, you some small information about higher order critical points. OK, a uh, spin system with long-range interaction is a, a, can be a, a, a lattice of spins. I and J are the labels of the lattice sites. The spins are bold because they are vectors of general N components. And the interaction is power law decaying, as I, saw, as I said, with D plus sigma. And D is the dimension of the system, so if we are on a for example, cubic lattice, this is the dimension of the cubic lattice. And sigma is some power, is a, some real positive number. And j is always positive, so the interaction will be always ferromagnetic. We can calculate the mean field propagator for this theory, and it is simply the, Fourier, the inverse Fourier transform of the interaction matrix. The interaction matrix is this function here. In the we have two different behaviors. So we know that the universality class and so the critical exponent and all the behavior of the system at the critical point where the phase transition occurs is, uh, uh, can be derived only by the low momentum excitation. The low momentum excitation are obtained in the Q to zero limit of the propagator. This, uh, this show, in, in the case of long range interaction, we have two completely different behaviors for the propagator. When sigma is uh, smaller than two, the leading term in the small momentum propagators is going as q to the sigma. So with a non-analytic power, as long as sigma is a real number. When sigma is greater than two, the propagator is going as q to the square in the low momentum limit. And q to the square is the same. Uh, behavior that the propagator will show in case of only short range interactions. So, we are ready to outline some traditional results. So, these results were derived by Fisher and other authors in the 70s, and they, they, uh, they can divide the spin system with positive sigma in three regimes. A first regime, when sigma is between zero and the half, it is a mean field region in the sense that the critical exponent and new universality class of the system can be retrieved using only mean field approximation. And the results are given. The anomalous dimension is equal to 2 minus sigma. And the correlation length exponent, correlation length exponent is 1 over sigma. With this, these two exponents, you can reconstruct all the other exponents so you know all the information about the scaling laws at the critical point in this region. When sigma is between d alpha and 2, 
We, we have some uh, peculiar long-range exponent. We are in a correlated region, as it happens for standard short-range easing or ON models. And we should determine our critical exponents numerically. Finally, they identified a region for sigma greater than 2 that if you understood this argument, it's obvious that for sigma greater than 2, we will recover the same exponents of, as in the short-range case because uh, the uh, low momentum propagator has exactly the same behavior as in the short range interacting case. So this was the picture retrieved by Fisher et others in the 70s. But this, and uh, they also calculate the, the critical exponent in this correlated region, and they found a peculiar behavior for long range interactions that the anomalous dimension, even in the correlated region, is stuck to the mean field result. They cannot calculate any correction even to order epsilon to the third. They, they do also one over an expansion and the result was the same. So they didn't find any correction to the mean field anomalous dimension even in the correlated region. And they concluded that this, uh, this result should be exact at all orders in the epsilon expansion and so should be exact. This, is, uh, this was somehow strange because uh, this would imply a discontinuity of the anomalous dimension as a function of sigma because uh, if this behavior should be valid till sigma equal to 2, it will, uh, it will give us an anomalous dimension equal to 0 exactly as sigma equal to 2. But for sigma greater than 2, we should have that the result should be the same as for a short range uh, model that has an anomalous, an, that has a non-vanishing anomalous dimension. So this result, if co combined with this one, would imply a discontinuity in the anomalous dimension as sigma equal to 2. This traditional picture was then uh, overcome by Sack, that some years later did um, an improved renormalization group analysis, and he found that uh, Actually, this behavior, the short range behavior of the system, is recovered not at sigma equal to 2, but at some sigma star that should be determined as sigma star equal to 2 minus the anomalous dimension of the short range. So the discontinuity obviously disappeared. And so we get this uh, diagram for the system regime. When sigma is greater than the half, we are in the mean field region. When sigma is below the half and less than this red boundary, that's sigma star, and it is, as you see, it's depending on the dimension, because obviously the anomalous dimension of the short range system depends on the dimension. Here, the system has peculiar long range exponents to be determined, and here it recovers short range behavior. This uh, picture was later confirmed in, the, in 2002 by Monte Carlo results by Lute Bloiten, but in recent years, in 2013 precisely, there were new Monte Carlo results that found us like a different picture. Indeed, while the result of Lute Bloiten confirmed the result of Fisher for the anomalous dimension, so the anomalous dimension is equal to 2 minus sigma till some sigma star, which is exactly 2 minus eta short range, and then is straight equal to the short range value. The Monte Carlo results found by Pico and others uh, we're claiming an anomalous dimension which has a non-mean field correction, and so it is continuously moving till is now sigma star equal to two. So we wanted to clarify this, uh, this issue, and we decided to reanalyze the long-range spin system using modern uh, renormalization group technique. In particular, we use functional renormalization group technique. I don't want to go into the details of the calculation I did. If somebody's interested, I can discuss it later. The only thing I want to say is that we used uh, that the meter starts with uh, Ginsburg Landau. We here I report the Ginsburg Landau, the standard Ginsburg Landau for a spin system in D dimension with only short range interaction, which has a standard kinetic term that depends only on the uh, which is, is the Laplacian of the field, then in this case is the magnetization. And the uh, Gisburg Landau for a long range system that has uh, this 
anomalous non-analytic kinetic term. Okay, the, it is important to note that the long-range Gisbull Randau will contain, as I showed you before, also short-range terms that are subleading for all sigma less than two, but that becomes leading for sigma greater than two. Okay, the first analysis we did, uh, it was we discard any renormalization for the kinetic term. And when we discard uh, renormalization for the kinetic term, we find that the results obtained for the short range, for the long range system can be uh, related to the, so in particular the critical exponent gamma, which is the divergence of the susceptibility, <laughs> Uh, the critical exponent gamma of the long range system is the same as the one of a short range system at an effective fractional dimension. This effective fractional dimension is given by this result. This was obtained discarding anomalous dimension effect both in the short range and in the long range part. When we turn with an up to anomalous dimension corrections, we turn on this renormalization of the kinetic terms, and we get that the, that the long range non-analytic term do not renormalize. So in agreement with the results of Fisher, we don't find any anomalous dimension correction to the long range power, and so we again find another relation for the critical exponent gamma, which, is now, which now includes effects of the anomalous dimension. Okay, so we have a tower of approximation. The first one, as I said, gives you this result. And the second approximation in which we have anomalous dimension corrections gives this result. It is important to note that in n equal to infinity limit, they both give an exact mapping so in the n equal to infinity limit, n is the number of components of the spin, so n equal to infinity is a spherical model, we obtain ex the critical exponent of the long range system can be obtained exactly from the critical exponent of the short range one. Also, the first relation gives the correct ranges for sigma, but it gives us the result found by Fisher while the second relation that is more complex and includes anomalous dimension corrections give us the results found by SAC. Finally, we added the short range corrections, so this term here. We added short range corrections to our theory, and we see that the picture is slightly more complicated. So, this, the phase diagram of a theory with long-range interaction has two fixed points. One where long-range interaction are vanishing is reported in blue, and the other where long-range interaction is non, are non-vanishing is reported in red. For sigma greater than sigma star, only the short-range interaction fixed point exists. For sig at sigma star, from the short-range fixed point, it emerge a new fixed point, a long range one, where both zeta and zeta two are non-zero. This long range fixed point that are the red lines is leading with respect to the short range one. So in this region, as is seen by this plot, these are the stability exponents. In this region, the long range fixed point is more stable than the short range one, and so gives us the actual universality class of our system. However, at the boundary sigma star, that it is found to be exactly two minus theta short range, as it was found by SAC, the system presents logarithmic corrections, which are probably responsible for the difficulties to pursue Monte Carlo simulations. Okay, we uh, were also, mm, sorry, we were also able to make some, car some estimation of the error that one does when use this effective dimension correction. This estimation was done computing the critical exponent uh, before for a long range system and then for a short range system at the effective dimension. The error, as you see, is very small. So at this approximation level, this effective dimension appears not to be exact but it appears to be a very good estimation for the critical exponents, as is shown in this plot. 
And so we use the effective dimension relation to compute the critical exponent uh, of spin systems uh, with a generic number of components in dimension two and dimension three. Now let me turn to the case of anisotropic interactions. Anisotropic interactions is when we, we can cut the system in two subspaces. One subspace of dimension D1, uh, the, the spin that are sitting in this subspace, they interact with a power law D1 plus sigma, where D1 is the dimension of the first subspace. In the second subspace, the spin interacts with, uh, uh, with an interaction D2 plus tau. Tau and sigma are different, are two real numbers always bigger than zero. And D1, they were D2 are the dimension of the two subspaces. The, um, so this interaction has been meant to mimic an interaction that's anisotropic depending on the direction. It's the extreme case in which the spins interact only if they sit in the same subspace. And if they are not sitting on the same subspace, as is mean by the delta, they do not interact. OK, this, uh, we can compute uh, the mean field propagator of this system. And it appears to be an anisotropic, as expected, with a, mom a momentum Q parallel to the sigma and a momentum Q perpendicular to the tau. And we can still derive against Burlandau that here I called an effective field theory, which represents the low energy behavior of the system I showed you. OK, this system can seem a little uh, exotic, but actually it has a simple realization. If we think to an easing spin chain or a quantum spin chain in general with long range interaction, we can map a quantum spin chain with long range interaction using classical correspondence, uh, quantum to classical correspondence, into a classical spin, uh, spin system with the anisotropic interaction I showed. So if I take a quantum spin chain uh, in dimension D with the power law decay sigma, it can be mapped on an isotropic classical spin system with dimension D1 equal to D. So this D1 will be equal to D, oh, sorry, the dimension of the, um, of the classical, of the dimension of the first of space will be equal to the dimension of the quantum system. The dimension D2 of the second subspace will be equal to the dynamical critical exponent of the, spin, of the quantum spin system. Sigma will be the, uh, the power law decay in the subspace one will be equal to the power law decay in the quantum system, while tau, the power law decay in the second subspace, will be equal to two. This means that the second subspace will always interact with only short range interactions. OK, the quantum long range using model is obtained when you put z, z equal to 1. So this just to show you that this anisotropic spin system can be realized. Well, in presence of anisotropy, this, the, we have uh, four different critical exponents that are the anomalous dimension of the uh, propagator in the two directions and the correlation length exponent in the two directions that, that uh, um, diverge with two different exponents, nu1 and nu2. Since we have only a critical point, even if the system is anisotropic, we have a relation between these four exponents, and the total number of independent exponents is reduced to three. We can specify only one anomalous dimension, the, the corresponding correlation length exponent, and we get the other two using this anisot anisotropy index that should be computed. At mean field level, the result is that the anomalous dimensions are vanishing in both the subspaces, uh, and the correlation length exponents are equal to one over sigma and one over tau. So when we are at mean field level, the two subsystems don't see each other, and the result is uh, like if they were isolated. So these systems can be divided have four different regions. And this can be understood also by the results that I told you before. For sigma and tau less than two threshold values, sigma star and tau star, we are in the anisotropic long range system here. And, uh, and both the two power law do not get any renormalization, even non at mean field level. Here, the blue shadow represents the mean field regions in two dimensions and in, in the 
two plus one dimension and one plus one dimensions. Otherwise, uh, when one of the two exponents, uh, sigma or tau, are greater than certain, certain threshold, tau star or sigma star, we are in this that we call mixed regions. Uh, so we are in a region where one subspace has a real power law decay, while the other subsp subspace is like a short range interacting one. These two regions, so 2A and 2B, are the interesting one when we are treating long range quantum spin system. Then we have, an, for sigma and tau greater than the thresholds sigma star and tau star, we recover a isotropic short range system because the long range interaction are irrelevant in both subspaces. Okay. Uh, we, can, uh, we can pursue the same analysis we did before for a standard long range system. And we found that in region one, so here, where the long range interaction are relevant in bo both subspaces, this anisotropic system can be mapped, so again, it has the same critical exponent gamma, of a long range uh, model in a dimension d1 plus theta d2, where theta is the anisotropy index, and d1 and d2 are the dimensions of the two subspaces. This relation is again exact in the spherical model limit and gives us the following result for the correlation length exponents. We can validate our results in the spherical model limit comparing them, comparing them with the one of the an anisotropic next nearest neighbor model. That's a model of spin, that's a spin system where we have next nearest neighbor interaction that are leading over near, nearest neighbor interactions. These results are very well known in literature, and uh, if we do the, if we impose that uh, C, that uh, tau is equal to 2L, as it should be for the case of the ANI model, we get these two relations uh, that are the one that one found in literature for the 1 over N expansion of the ANI model. So we validate somehow our calculations. We show that this anisotropic uh, long range uh, system are something meaningful because they can reproduce the results of a model that's well studied one. And we can go on computing the anomalous dimension of the system. As I already told you, in region one, we have no anomalous dimension for the system, both in both subspaces. While in region two A or B, where one of the subspace is only short range interacting, we develop an anomalous dimension. And the interesting thing is that this anomalous dimension depends on the value of the power law exponent in the other subspace. And so when we are in region 2A or B, the anomalous dimension of the short, of the short range interacting sector depends on the power law decay of the long range interacting sector. And we compute the dependence of these anomalous dimensions. We can again do a, a brief uh, summary of what we found. In the region one, we have uh, an effective dimension that is exact in the n equal to infinite limit and gives correct ranges for the regions. In region two, we have again an effective dimension, but this time it maps on a short range system. And we can use it even if it has uh, anomalous dimension corrections. In region three, we have only the, the simple short range universality class. And so these are the regions outside the mean field approximation. Region one, the boundary are now corrected by the presence of the anomalous dimensions that is reported here. So you see that the boundary are different for different spin components. So the red is the n equal one, so it's an easy model that has a non-vanishing anomalous dimension also in d equal two. So the boundary gets renormalized in this way. While the other curve are n equal two and three, blue and green. And since in two dimensions, this is a d1 equal to one and d2 equal to two, they have a vanishing anomalous dimension. Also the boundary go back to the mean field one in this point. And in this region, we recover the exponent of a short range system. Okay, this is the same plot, but when we have d1 equal to 2 and d2 equal to 3, so uh, d1 equal to 2 and d2 equal to 1, and so obviously it's not symmetric. 
Also in this case, uh, we can use the effective dimension cor uh, relation to compute the critical, the correlation length exponent. We know that this will be not exact, but they will be a very good approximation for the exact ones. Uh, so, in this way, we were able to characterize all the phase diagram of anisotropic long range systems using uh, almost only effective dimension relations that can be derived in the standard case with scaling arguments, but which are much harder to derive in this anisotropic case, and which we were able to use thanks to this functional aromatization group technique. Thank you all for your attention. <laughs>